through. Welcome to Starting Strengths. Today we've got a treat for you. Uh, this will be the first time I know of in modern history where the Olympic press has been uh, taught in a video format to uh, people on the internet. We're here today with our friend Tommy Suggs. Tommy's come up from San Antonio and he is uniquely qualified to give us this instruction. Tommy was with York Barbell back in the 60s. He was the editor-in-chief of Strength and Health magazine, the world's largest athletic weightlifting publication, visible culture publication at that time. At the time. And uh, he was the editor of this publication for many years back during the middle of the 60s. He was also a member of the York Barbell team and a national level competitor and an international level coach. And this was a lift that was contested as the first of the three Olympic lifts back before the 72 Olympics. It was an important part of everyone's training. And Tommy is uniquely qualified to give us his perspective on how to coach this lift that has enjoyed quite a resurgence in popularity. And what we're going to do now is just kind of hide and watch as Tommy works with Brian Fox, one of our lifters here at Wichita Falls Athletic Club, and shows him how to do the Olympic press. All right. Thank you, Grip. Thanks. Uh, Brian, let's... Uh... Let me, if we can get it on the video here, uh, to show you some of the basic things. Is that what we want to do is move our hip forward, have a little more weight on our toes than the heels, and have it so that the bar is always over the instep where it should be. And we just move it forward so that we have enough bend that we tighten this up everywhere in the quads, uh, uh, glutes, abs. And whenever we do, we want to drive that. Because whenever we come up, that gives a drive just as if you're driving like a jerk. So we're here, we drive it to here, and we get a lot of deltoids in it, and we're here, and then we press up. So the movement will be, as we go along, here, here, and on up. But we'll do it one step at a time so that you get used to these positions. Let's try that first, where you just get up, and you take a set. Do two or three of those where you do that and kind of get the feel of it yourself. Move that hip forward. On forward, bend back a little bit more. Right in there. Now, bring the hips back and throw up that, throw that bar up. Okay, good. Now, we'll get the back bend later on. Right now, we're just trying to get the position and we're trying to get the drive. Just try it one more time now. Move the hips forward. All right, now drive it up. Good. Now let's try putting a little bit of weight on there. Put your plate on each end. Now, am I in the way here? Okay. What I want you to do is to take that and sit with it, hold it for a second, and then drive up and just get a good start. Don't worry about pressing over here. Just drive it up and then catch it. I just want to see how much drive. Get your deltoids in it. Drive, get on forward, get chip forward. Way on forward. Now drive up. Yeah. One more time. Do that click. What you want, hold it up. There you go. Now sit on down. But that's the drive. Whenever you have a bow, you press it down. And then you release the top, the energy can't go down, so it has to go up. And that's what we're doing here. There's a couple of things we want to guard against. First of all, when we have the elbows, we don't want them here because that will have a tendency to throw the bar forward. We don't want them too high because we can't get enough tricep and arm into it. We want it about right here so it lays right across the deltoids. And when you drive, you drive not only with the arms, but with these shoulders. These things, throw it right up. Then you'll catch it back there. Uh, let's put a little more on there and see about throwing it up and it catches me going under. I think it's so light now. Let's put another 10 on each end. What I want you 
once you do the first one, take, take it and get your position and throw it up. Don't try to press it all the way. Just throw it up and try to catch it. You see how much drive you get? Sit down and then we'll do one all the way. And I'll, I'll tell you a little something in between. We're going to step forward now. We're way on forward. We're way on forward. Now drive that. Now, that's fine. Now, he's getting the drive. It's good to take it and, and, and get in the rack uh, and spend uh, several sets and all. Getting used to the flexibility. You need to have flexibility and get used to that position. Then you can practice just driving it a little bit on your own. Then the next stage is going to driving it and lay it back with it. So as you drive that here, as soon as, soon as you drive, assume that lay back position immediately. The same position that you had to start with. Yeah. But real quick, so you drive it right back with it. Okay, step forward, drive. What you're doing now, now that's good. What you're doing though, you went back and you went back this way. You move the hips forward just like you were. Because when you go back this way, then the bar is, is off center of gravity and that pulls you back. So you can throw it straight up and you move the hips straight in. It's a thing of resuming that uh, initial position rather than leaning too far back. So drive it up and then drive the hips. Go ahead. It, it, it is, you hear it, and now you drive it up, and then you grip hips for it. Yeah, you don't lean back like you were, you put your so, hips into it. That way the bar's always over hits. And it, uh, it takes a lot of practice. Uh, we're going at this, and we're asking a lot of Brian to do this correctly, because it's just like trying to say, we're going to teach you how to do a snatch in one workout. You just don't do it. It is that complicated and that much involved. But you will get a, uh, an idea before we finish up here about how to proceed. Okay, so now hit forward, you drive it. There you go, feel that? Was it easy? Yeah, yeah set it on down. <laughs> but you see how that works? Yeah, while ago, you were leaning back this way. You bring your hips in. It goes here, here. It just resumes right where it was. That is equivalent to the top pull of the snatch or the clean. You hit it and quick, you go back. So you go right forward, as soon as you hit, you don't go in and dally around. It's boom, boom, just as quick as you can. That looked real good. What would you say about the similarity that this bears to a push press? It, it bears. Because I noticed that last rep, he, you had a lot of knee bend in it, didn't yeah. you? Well, Does that need to be addressed? Or what? Well, well, let's, let's address that's it. the first thing we're going to hear in our email. Okay. The, the, the thing is this, and, the, and it's, it's a very good point, but it's also a point that you, we have to discuss just a little bit. Whenever the, the rules were and how this came in, is that you couldn't bend your knees or get any drive from the legs when you press. But somebody got real smart and realized that, hey, those knees are bending, but I'm getting some drive from my body. From the hips. And from the hips straightening out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So, but what happens is when you get as much bend as far as you can, your knees start to bend. Now, one of the reasons why the Olympic press, one of them, was ruled out is because it's very difficult, or eliminated, but it's because it's very difficult to judge how much knee bend. Some are getting a little bit. You get an mm -hmm. Eastern Bloc country with Eastern Bloc left it. They got a lot of knee here. And it was the same thing with Western uh, judges and, and uh, right. Western politics. Yeah, so that was a big thing. Now what Starr said, and what I believe, is that you put in this article, that's a very good article, is uh, put your hips forward until your knees just try to bend. Then go off that. So you kind of store the... You got it, it's right here. In it, the, it, it's, oh, it's in the, like in the quads, well, but it, like it, at the top of them. Well, right? it, it's like bending a bow. It, it, in the middle is where all the energy comes from. Right. And that's where it is here. So what you're getting all it from is from the body straightening up. 
what straightens the body up is this. Now it needs it's to the, do the something. Tension in the quads. Here and right here the ship. But it's, it's 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 hip flexors, it, not it, knee extensors. No, but what they do is it depends on how much you want to like using these, right? And how much you think is allowed. <coughs> I never did like to use much. I didn't use any knee kick on it. Uh, it was just there until I felt them well, about to go. I sat there because you have to get a clap from the judge. So you try to pause and then drive up, but it's all this in here. And keep this tight. Well, let's try that again. Let me get out of the way. <coughs> let's, let's, let's pay attention to knees on this and let's see if we can uh, see you what you're talking about. Much speed. Get, get more flexibility in your hips. But do it not by leaning the back, but moving your hips forward. Moving your hips forward is the thing. You have to be pretty flexible on this. Okay, now move those hips forward. Hold it, hold it, drive it. Yeah. Now that look here, if I want to Good. Sit Good. Down. Good again. You drive that. It's just like you get the shrug at the top. Boom. It accelerates right there at the end. That's where you want with this drive. You want it to be up, and then boom. All of a sudden, this comes in. And quick. Because that speed is what keeps you driving up. That's the mouse in the bench press effect. All right. Put up. Put another weight on there. Let's try it. We're not going to be able to tell anything until we uh, overload it. <laughs> so go ahead. Drive right, so. right, this. We've had a little bit of weight here. And the reason we're doing this here, normally you'll work a little slower in the gym. You'll try getting that position. I notice that flexibility is a problem. One of the things I wrote as a clarification of uh, uh, Rip Aspen to on Star's article is that an exercise that we use that will help that flexibility and the strength of these is to be on a bench, have someone holding your legs, keep straight, have the bench hit you right here, and do sit-ups off the end. Now that's the same bend in effect that you're getting here. And it also works the flexibility and also strength. We used to do it with, with weights that we held here. Start with nothing. Get the flexibility, get the feel in that right here. You don't have to come all the way up. You just want to come here and get a good stretch there. That'll help your flexibility so you can assume that position better. All right, now let's get one. I want you to pick it up, set. Bring those hips back and forth like that. And quick on the layback. Really explode. Think about really like throwing it up. Sit on down. Now what I'd like for it to do here, and this is something, uh, and that was good. Uh, particularly good, I've uh, never done it, uh, done it before. Uh, is when you drive here and here, you come back, don't get in a hurry to recover. Let it get up to almost a lock out. And you won't be here now, remember you'll be in here. But stay on back in that laid back position until it gets on up. Because when you start coming up against the bar, you're adding weight to that bar. So wait till it's up there real high where you have this strong lockout before you come up. All right, good. Do one more rep. We don't worry out too much, we'll be able to go up anymore. Really get those hips forward. Way forward, drive. That's all right, good. How did that feel? It felt pretty good. Yeah, but do you feel like that was easier than if you were just military? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and which is something to start with, because when you first start, nothing feels better than how you used to do it. So <laughs> that's it. All right, now uh, let's put another 10 on there. And that's enough to, to be, uh, see how things are gonna go. All right, we're gonna, we've got to load it up to, uh, to uh, a poundage that, that will be uh, a little bit of a challenge. Uh, and of course, uh, if you know, if you haven't done any uh, Olympic lifting, uh, that as the weight gets uh, a little faster, all of a sudden your form will leave you. Uh, so, but with this little bit of coaching, you're looking real well. Just, just do what we did, what you did on the last one. Uh, the only thing you may want to do is when you lean back, stay back a little longer, because if you come up as you're in here, it's the same thing as adding weight to, to the bar. And so stay back till you get it up so that you know it's not going to be a lockout. All right, get forward and really tight and really use those hip flexors. Do those hips forward now. Hold it up. Good. 
the Alice Super Steve did jerk, that's all right. Yeah, watch the motor's knee jerk, because I'm kind of watching the, the top part. So you got a little bit extra there, but that's all right. But you know, she stayed back a little longer as you got here, so that's going pretty good. All right, that's what, 95, huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, you want me to five? I'll get another 10. This, this is Bill Starr method, just put weights on. <laughs> he would have a 25 and a 5 and then a 35. And, right. Now we're going to try a weight here that's a challenge. This is what, maybe 10 pounds under your, your uh, military first single. And uh, of course, uh, we're putting a lot of pressure on doing something completely different with this little bit of coaching. Uh, this this is, 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 you're doing real well. So just get it, and I noticed the last time we were talking about you had a little bit of extra knee in it, uh, and I was telling you that when you're here, you think about driving, it's feeling heavy, you feel like you need to get that little extra dog. Just think about those hips doing it. Alright. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> he threw it here, but he was a little slow. See, he can't hesitate. Alright, we're gonna try one more time. Ah, uh, I can say this this is very difficult to do it. What happened last time when he drove that, he didn't get under it fast enough. And I was telling him when we took a little rest there, that it's like doing a snatch. When you pull a snatch up, as soon as that thing hits the top, you're under it quick. And it's the same thing with this. You have to be just as quick. When you throw that weight here, you've got to be under it before it starts coming down. It's like you have to be under a snatch before it starts coming down. So it's got to be real quick. Hip back, back, just, just, just as fast as you can. And throw it on with the, those deltoids and traps on. Keep pressing. Stay back. Really dry. But stay back. There you go. Good. Congratulations, you did good. Now, and see if you could have. It, the way the Olympic press was done, or the way the lifters did the Olympic presses, they had a lot more flexibility. Their hips were moving two and three inches more than that, from the drive to underneath it. And the thing is, whenever you have, you're here and you drive it with all of this here, it's here. If you go under it, all of a sudden, your elbows are here, and then here, you can see the change in that, in the leverage that you have and you just keep pressing yourself under. What it does, it gets it through that stick. <clears throat> well, he did a good lift there. Uh, but the thing is, though, he needs more flexibility in those hips. He needs to be able to move them. When you hear, I have trouble doing it, I'm old now, and I, I don't move like I did. But you need to be able to move those things more forward without bending the knees. Same thing, you need to be able to lay back more. The way the Olympic lifts were done, the lifters that did that, uh, there was a lot more, two, three inches more movement in the hips than what we're getting here. Now to help you do that, if you want to learn as you go along, is to take a weight and sit down and let it get where you're strong in that position. Let it make you bend and then also do those sit-ups off the end of the bench. But just get that weight. In fact, let's get this down and just see if you can let that just kind of push you where you're having more and more in the hips forward. Yeah, you're not going to do anything but, but sit back for only four or five seconds down there and just set it on down. Move those hips forward. Move it forward. Now hold that there. Try to try to just let me get any more fella. Just push it, push it. There you go, push it more. Push it more. Hold it. Now sit it on down. But you feel that you're getting a little more, then pretty soon you'll feel stronger, you'll strengthen that position doing this and doing those sit-ups. Because that's the key. It depends how strong you are. It's like coming out, out of a, a squat clean. If your legs aren't strong, you're not going to come up. You need to be strong when you get a heavy weight on it. These flex, hip flexors keep those quads, quads and the glutes all tight. Now, but you need more flexibility so you can tell how much more you felt like you were going, going to be broken in half and you weren't moving on any yeah. compared, compared to what the Olympic lifters did. Particularly those that had presses ruled out every once in a while. <laughs> they got a little too much. Particularly back then. 
they would actually bend back so that their, their back was almost parallel with the ground. Yeah. So, uh, but, uh, which is also is another reason they stopped uh, having the press because a lot of back trouble because of that. that. That wasn't good. That was a good press you did a while ago. We've already showed this and we talked about the sit -ups. Let's go over and do a couple of those sit ups off the end of the bench just to see them because when you describe them, people don't always know for sure, uh, have a, uh, a mental, uh, picture of them. All right, we're going to show people how to do this. Sometimes when you describe it, it's hard to get a visual picture of it. It's so much easier when you see it and you say, oh, I, now I understand. Uh, once you get on the bench, and uh, again, the Olympic like Tony Garstin, he, had, he was really efficient uh, with this style. And his hips moved maybe that much more than what we're moving here because of the flexibility and the movement that he had in it. Also, you need to just strengthen that position and your body doesn't want to go there. It's one of those things that you kind of have to work at. Uh, one thing is work into this thing kind of slow. Uh, get in the rack like that and uh, do sets of just letting the weight come down and sit on you a little bit. Then you, a little later on you can you just practice on driving it. And then you kind of put it all together. Just how we did it there, you need to in your training to break those things up and spend some time on each one. Getting used to that position and what you're doing. You know, segments one at a time, then you can like uh, put it all together in a press like you did at the end. But this will help you here. All right, let's see if I can put this together. All right, now come on back. Yeah, come on back to the foot. Yeah, right there. Now you just come up this couple of inches. Take you straight, on down. You don't feel it feels hip flex. Now on down. Let it go down, get it real good flexible. Let it flex, each time for you a little flexible. Come on up. Right there, let's get come on up now. Yeah, do you feel that? <laughs> See, it's really working you here, in your back and everywhere. But you, one of the things that, that will hold your back here is a lack of flexibility. So you have to be flexible. Now we got where we were handling some heavy weights here coming up just to about parallel because that's all you need is up to parallel. But we'd go back and let that thing stretch real good, come up to parallel, and that's a good exercise to do as a uh, assistant exercise kind of at the end of your press workout. All right, real good. You've done real well. Thank you, sir. Yeah, real good. Pleasure working with you.